<clears throat> now that we have the, this is part two. Now that we have, we, we've created the body itself and using the sculpt environment, we've split that in half. Now what we need to do is actually join these together and turn it into a solid body because at the minute it's still a surface. So the first first thing we're going to do if we look at our sketch is I turn that off. You can see that that part that I've just deselected is actually inset slightly. So let's turn it back on. And what we can do is uh, use the offset function within the surface environment. So if we click on the part we want to offset, and then we type in minus three or you know minus four, that is going to then you know offset that curvature by four millimeters inwards. So if we turn the original one off. We can see if we look at the side now, and then I turn the other one on, you can see the difference. Now that's a lot more closer to the sketch that we've got. So now that we've done that, we can start actually adding the sketches and then sweeping these things, the, these profiles. So if we create a new sketch here on the side plane again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to project P for project on the keyboard. We're going to project the very edges of these uh, bodies and what that's going to allow us to do is create a tangent um, line between them two surfaces because otherwise if you don't project them the lines won't match up and then it just it it's a nightmare to fix so once you've done that you can just create a line between them two points finish the sketch and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the sweep command up here and select the profile that we want to uh, sweep then we're going to select the path and make sure chain selections on that's going to select the whole of the geometry um, and then we're going to use the guide rail which is the inside um, line of the part we've just offset if you don't see this it might be on single path um, but what you can see what happens is if we select single path it doesn't match up properly so we have to use a guide rail, which is the second surface, which is this one. So if you click that, you can see it matches up perfectly, which is what we want. And if everything looks fine, click OK. Now you can see we've uh, combined them together. Although they are still separate bodies, it it just looks, you know, all together, That's, which is what we want. So now I'm going to do the same for the top part, connecting the lid. So if we create another sketch on that plane, Zoom in, P for project, going to project the edges again, but this time we're not going to use a line, we're going to use an arc. So if we go to create arc, three point arc, now when you use this tool, the first two selections you make are actually the edges of the arc. So you can see the third point actually defines the radius of the arc. So we're just going to create something like that. It doesn't matter if it's not accurate at the minute, but once you're happy with that, click Finish Sketch. Now you can see if we zoom in and then use the Sweep command again, we select that profile, select the top path, and then select the guide rail, which is the bottom part. Sometimes this happens, you get an error. Even though we've just done it on the bottom part, an error shows up, which is get rid of that, which is a bit annoying because it's this. It, we just use the same technique. So what we can do is if we zoom out, is we can actually split this in half and then only sweep along the half of it. So if we select all the visible bodies, holding control, and then S for search, and we're going to type in mirror, mirror, enter. They should already be selected, which is fine. And then the mirror plane is that sketch plane that we've been using. So if we select that and click OK, now we should get a few more bodies. Oh, this is happening again. Why is this? Hmm. Maybe if I go back. Sometimes things don't work. I've just created the tutorial, so if I go into. I'm 
I'm not sure what's going on. Um, if I go back before the sweep and then try and split it. Mirror. Sorry, split body. What am I, what am I doing? Uh, so just split body. That one, that one, that one. Split using that plane, the sketch plane. And you're going to get a red circle. That's going to define where it's split, which is what we want. And we want to turn off all the bodies on one half of it, which is that there, that there. So now you should be left with this. Um, so now if I turn the sketch on, sweep that profile again, path. We don't want it chained this time because we just want this edge. So select that edge and then do that. That should be fine. Now if we create a sketch again, P for project. Check them, create an arc, select the two points we just projected and define how big we want the arc to be, that's fine. Now if we zoom in a bit, sweep the profile, top path, bottom path, there we go. And now it works, I don't know why it does that, it's just something that Fusion does. Right, so now we've got that. But these are all separate bodies. What we need to do is stitch them together to create one body. So if we select all of the visible bodies and then go up to tools and then stitch. Anything that's red won't be stitched and anything that's green will be. So because we've only got one half, there's nothing for these parts here to stitch to, which is fine. And anything that's green is the, you know, the join of all of these bodies, that, uh, sorry, surfaces that we've just created. So that looks fine. So now we should see this is just one body now. So what we can do is mirror that. So S mirror. Select that S mirror. Mirror plane is that plane that we've just used to split the body again. Click OK. Now we should have two identical halves, obviously mirrored. But we need to join these together again. So we're going to stitch them together. Now you can see the lines that we've just mirrored on are the ones that are stitching and the ones at the top and bottom have nothing to stitch to, but we're going to fix that in a second. So stitch them together. So now we should have one cylinder. So now the last few steps are that we're going to close this up and turn it into a, a solid body. So the first we need to patch the top. So if you select an edge surface, it's going to create a patch as if you know you just cut a stencil out and then stuck it on just to fill that gap. So we're going to create that, that's fine. Then we need to patch the bottom. Select the bottom edge. So now again we've got three bodies, we need to stitch them together. Now they're green, that's fine, okay. So now this should turn into a, a solid body. So you can see it's a solid body if you go to inspect and then section analysis and click on any plane but that one will do you can see that anything that's you know got these lines on it that means that it's a solid body so we're just going to turn that off for now turn the analysis off so then we go back to the solid environment because it's a solid body we can now use these tools in in the way that we would use them any other time so if we hit F on the keyboard fill it I'll just go to the top, we can fill it this and type in 2, fill it at the bottom, 2 millimeters. Now it's really up to you what you want to do with this, you know, you, you, obviously yours will be different to this, but you can even fill it these edges if you want to, um, type in 2, or maybe 5, yeah, and then fill it the inside, or you can chamfer them if you want. 10, that'll do, it's just whatever looks right, we're just finishing it off, and then here I just want to fill it at this edge, and that one, so maybe one, is that too much, no, 0.5, that's 
fine. So that's it, we now have our finished water bottle. Now, ideally you would make it so, um, hollow because it is you know, a water bottle, you need to put stuff in it. But because we're just creating a model as a test that you would maybe 3D print or something, it doesn't matter too much that it's not hollow. But if you did want to hollow it, you just use the shell function at the top and then you click on the bottle and you know, then do, you define how thick you, you want the surface to be. But that's fine for now. Um, you can use these techniques to pretty much anything you want to create. So if you've got a sketch of something, you know, like a piece of cutlery or something, or you know, a cup or anything like that, you can use them techniques using the canvas technique and then sculpting and then using surfaces to create these bodies. You can create this bottle using surfaces only. But I think that's another t tutorial because it can get quite difficult. But that's it for now. If you want to then add materials to that, you go on the render workspace and then click on the appearance tab. We can then drag uh, like an al aluminium anodized material on top of this. But then if we wanted the front part to be mirrored, we can then, instead of selecting bodies components, select faces. So then if we drag the mirror, here it's only going to change the material for that face so if then if we want to drag that here drag it there I think that's fine yeah that's fine so you can see that because I've added a mirrored um, material it's now reflecting the environment if you wanted to change how reflective that would be or the color you could change it to a blue or red or something um, I'll make it white for now you can change the roughness amount here so if we just move it up in increments you can see the more rough it is the more diffused and soft that reflection is becoming so you know that's really up to you and the same with the aluminium if we double click on that we can then I'll move it over here we can then adjust the roughness of that so you can see it's reflecting the environment in the same way this um, mirror material would but if we move it up that is becoming more soft now that's personal preference but it's just an example um, so yeah so you can try this out for yourself if you've got any questions leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you but I would like to encourage you to try this yourself you know change the design of the bottle you know maybe add something to the top or even split this completely and not sweep that profile in between these two parts you know and have it coming off maybe try and sketch on the the part from where you drink from or something like that so it's up to you so yeah that was the tutorial on the water bottle using sculpt and service modeling